How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, with Brian Alvarez, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Week after WrestleMania. I gotta tell you, you know, I, I didn't know how I was, how I was going to feel about wrestling this week. Because it was a lot. Last week was a tremendous amount of pro wrestling that we all consumed. I gotta tell you, man, it was great. Wrestling was really good. SmackDown on Friday night. New Bloodline. This is going to lead to a civil war between the Bloodline. I can't wait to talk about this. John Moxley, new IWGP champion, beating Nate Naito. This is going into Forbidden Door, which I'll have some Forbidden Door information also. But this is very interesting. John Moxley, new IWGP champion. I think this is great. Very excited to see what they do with this. The Young Bucks showed the all-in footage. The tape was shown on Wednesday. Led to an angle. Everybody thought this was leading to Jack Perry, but I think this led more to FTR. We're going to talk about that. The Rock's future also. Monday, he did his goodbye. He went back to his home planet. But it's not over because Cody made a reference to, to The Rock. I see my producers laughing when I said that. Uh, the, Cody made a reference to The Rock on SmackDown, which we'll talk about also. But this is really... Dude, I got to tell you guys, I'm psyched for wrestling and and both companies. And by the way, next week's pay-per-view is what an all-star lineup for AEW Dynasty. That pay-per-view looks unbelievable. We're going to talk about all of this, but I want to hear from you guys. Tweet me at Andrew Zarian. Let me know what you think of everything happening in the world of professional wrestling. We're going to talk about all of this and a whole lot more when we come back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Man, like I said, that was a fun week of pro wrestling last week. I had a blast. Uh, Sunday, Saturday, obviously, uh, we spoke about on Sunday what, what I did. On Saturday, I had people over. My viewing habits are so different watching it with people versus watching it with a smaller group. Saturday, I had a big party in my house. Everybody was here. Sunday... It was just me and the kids. We sat down. We watched it. I had a drink. And it was a blast watching Night 2. Night 2 was a better night. I think we all agreed Night 2 was the better night here. But you know what I got in front of me? I got Dave's star ratings for the show. You know, the, it, this was tremendous. I mean, uh, almost every match was good. I'm looking here. Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch, 4.25. Well deserved. Six pack ladder. Six pack tag team ladder match. Four two five. Rey Mysterio and Andrade. Santos Escobar Dominic Mysterio. Three seven five. <laughs> this is the one that did not do well. Jey Uso, Jimmy Uso. I thought this was an error when I first saw it, but it's not. An 0.75? Is that right? That is right, and someone on the someone on the wonderful internet this week pointed out that he actually gave uh, um, Jerry Lawler and Jim, uh, Michael Cole's match a higher star rating than this. Wow! Back in the day, listen, maybe <laughs> maybe it was one. a typo. Maybe the what? <laughs> maybe maybe it should have been a one seven. I don't know. I didn't think it was. It was. It wasn't great. It wasn't a great match. We talked match. about this last week. It was, but you know, was again, bad. this is a great example of how. You know, it's one person's opinion. It's a very important person's opinion in professional wrestling. But also, how you view this will play a part. When I watched this match, I did not like it at all. I, I did not think it was a good match. Um, I don't think it was any fault of Jay or Jimmy. I felt it was more of the fault of they got lost in the shuffle. They could have made yeah. this mean something. It didn't. I don't know. 075, to me, a little low. But, you know. Everybody has. Well, their own we'll score. talk about it in a minute. We'll yeah. talk about it in a minute, but yeah, it, it, because it is leading somewhere. Of course, it might get better. Jay Cargill, Naomi Bianca versus Damage Control got a two. Sammy, Sammy Zayn and Gunther four point four point five. Well deserved. The Rock and Roman That's... versus Cody and Seth got got a four. This was a little too long for me. This match, I I loved every. Yeah. You know, listen, I enjoyed all of it. I enjoyed all of it. Best them. match in night one was the Sami Zayn Gunther match. Oh, Oh, one hundred and thirty percent, no question about it. Rhea, Rhea and Excellent. Becky, I very much liked also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great yeah. match. We got Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, three point five. 
the payoff was the big story here of this of night two. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to. I'm not going to summarize right. everything. You guys have heard this a billion times. Um. Yeah. I. You know, the payoff was the punk moment, and you know, I didn't get a chance to talk about this in detail, but. When and, and again, I gauge if something is very successful, not only just by like how I see wrestling, right? My viewpoints on wrestling, which are, you know, I'm raised on the Dave Meltzer school of wrestling, really. That was my first, you know, real deep dive into learning more about it was listening to the Wrestling Observer on IATA. So am I, do I lean a certain way towards a style? 130%. But I'm also able to recognize because I'm in marketing, I'm in sales, I work with, you know, my, my day job, I'm able to take my own opinion out and see what's better. You know, I thought, I thought I liked the Drew McIntyre stuff. I'm, I'm a fan of his. I thought the match was fine, but the payoff at the end was interesting, okay? Drew goes to celebrate with his wife, and the camera, and, and these are those little things. The camera pans behind him. And you see Punk in the distance. And it follows Drew going to Punk. That sets such an important tone that my wife, you know, she's doing stuff and looking up. The kids are watching. So she's, she goes, wow, that was really good. When that happens, when a non-casual... Someone that doesn't really, you know, she tolerates wrestling because of me. When she's able to stop and say, that was really good, that's really good. You know what, what else she did that for? MG, and you were there for that. What a blast did she have at All, at all Out 2021? Oh, she had, a, she had a great time. She said she's never seen a wrestling show like this. She's gone to a bunch with me. She said this felt more like a rock concert than anything else. The energy was tremendous. And you know what? That means a lot to the product. If someone that is a non-fan is able to kind of get in and ask questions and wants to know more, that's, that's what they're fighting here. I thought that was great, what they did. Bobby Lashley, Street Profits, and, uh, versus uh, Final Testament, 1.75. Eh, it was a, you know, it was a hardcore style match with Bubba as the ref. It was a tribute. It was an ECW yeah, it was a, tribute. That's what it that's was. That's all it was. Yep. LA Knight, AJ Styles. I very much like this match. 3.5. Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton. 4.25. I was a little taken out that it was a triple threat or a three-way match. I, I would have liked this to be a one-on-one, -on -one and I'm sure we'll lead to something. Flash. You're getting, you're getting, you're getting uh, I know. the one-on-one -on -one coming. <laughs> yeah. Probably Bailey going. EO, 4.5. I love this match. I thought it was great. You great and I both. For Bailey. This was, yeah. This was the one you and I had the most dialogue on during the match. Yeah. The, Bailey we looked back great. And forth, loving this thing. Yeah. And the main event, Cody mm -hmm. Rhodes, Roman Reigns, 475. Uh, well deserved. Uh, you know, big, big ending. Everybody came out. Everybody showed up. Steve Austin did not show up. The report is they couldn't <laughs> agree on financials on this. I would have loved to see Steve Austin do a face to face with The Rock. But you know what? We got the big choke slam. So was The Rock going to take a stunner? A Is that what he was going to do? Probably. Oh, man. You know what? That, There's that always next school, year. like, sell, the stunner sell. Oh, he flips. He's spinning in orbit <laughs> after the stunner. Would have loved it. What's your question? Uh, I had, so, so, top to bottom, if I look at this, do you remember a time when every, every match on WrestleMania got better as the night went on? Because that's what this this shows me is the co-main Bailey and Neil Sky got a four point uh, four point five and then a four point seven five for the main. It's like yeah. it just got better and better as the night went on. That's it how did. it should it be. Did. No, it's it been did. a long. I can't remember another one that went in that fashion. Well, yeah, know? because because of look how they placed it. Right, you had very important matches back to back, and you're right. Remember, there's always that breather match before the main event. They didn't do that. No, they did not. Um, the, the I guess the breather would have been the Street Profits match, and that was right after Drew. So that they was went two after two hours earlier, though. Yeah, that was two <laughs> hours earlier. But you know, they did the same with on night one as well. Right. You know, they went just, from Jade, Jade Naomi, Bianca, Damage Control to Sammy Gunther to the main event. So they they positioned a very strong match before the main, and I'm curious if that's an experiment to keep the energy up. Because these are long shows, you know, even though they're not going past midnight anymore, but these are still considered long shows. Those are long days for the people in that building. Think about waking up, getting up, going to the venue, sitting around, doing nothing until you get it. You know, it, it's, it's a lot. 
And night one, it was freezing cold. That audience was suffering. Night two, th that energy was high. You had three bangers. You had four bangers back to back. LA Knight, AJ Styles, mm -hmm. Logan Paul, Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, Bailey, EO, and Cody and Roman. That's big. That's really big. I, I wanted to, I I wanted to spend some time show. on this. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to spend some time yeah. on this because I think I think it was important to talk about how this positioned. And listen, best WrestleMania of all time. A lot of people are arguing that. I don't feel that way um, because I've seen I've I've been in attendance for two great WrestleManias, ten and twenty. I've seen seventeen. I've seen nineteen. Um, I don't know. I don't know how you could rank this as far as the best or the greatest. But as far as profits go. And gate goes and everything else. This was the most, yeah. I mean, the biggest WrestleMania they've done. Viewership was up. I Somebody had said to me, and I, I think Dave had verified this, that last year the estimated number for WrestleMania viewership was between 2 and 3 million. Did you see that? So yeah. if it was up 40%, I mean, that that's a tremendous bump, you know, year over year for that show. I want to Fantastic. spend some time on this in the first segment and second segment here. Uh, to talk about it because uh, everything that we are going to talk about in the next segment is going to be the follow up to this and where we're headed and how this is going to work out. When we come back, this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Do me a favor, follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarin. Follow me on X. I got to get used to that. My producers are yelling at me in my ear. You guys can't hear it, but I can. It's X. It's X. Follow me on X at Andrew Zarian. Let's go into this. You know, Raw started out a uh, big segment. Obviously, Cody, new world champion. If you noticed, it is not the universal title. It is the undisputed title. The undisputed WWE champion. Which I'm, I'm so glad they're going away from that universal name because it makes no sense. I mean, it's such a Vince McMahonism. What's bigger than the world? The universe. The universe. What is a universal champion? I don't. I, I never liked it. Anyway, Cody comes out. Uh, the Rock comes out. They do this back and forth. I'm not. It was Monday, but it sets you up. The Rock goes away, but it sets you up for something big between them, where The Rock handed something to to Cody. And what did he say? He said, "Don't disappoint me ever again. Don't let me down ever again." It was something like that, yes. That segment was 40 mm -hmm. minutes, over 40 minutes, 42 minutes. And you know what? I was fine with it. I was fine with it. And, you know, you look at that, and that's a shortcut for them to make the show a little tighter on the second half. I thought it was fine. I thought it was a fine Raw. But I, I want to talk about SmackDown here because Cody opened up SmackDown. This was the first SmackDown opening with a new world champion since 2020. I think it was August of 2020, right? That was the last, uh, that was Roman's um, win? September. September? September's when he won the title, I believe. It was the second, it was a show after SummerSlam because yeah. he returned at SummerSlam. Yeah. Cody opened it up. He, he started it with, with Brandy's line where he said uh, he didn't know it was open mic night. That, uh, that in regards to The Rock. He announced two triple threat matches, and the winner's facing next week. We got the right to face him at Backlash in France. I was very concerned, and I think a lot of people have been. And, you know, we have to stop thinking like this is Vince McMahon's WWE. It's still WWE, and they still do stupid stuff. I was going to say a bad word here on the radio. I would get punished. I got an infraction if I did that. They still will do WWE things. However, they're setting him up with opponents. And this is not a Brian Danielson Kane moment. This is not every time somebody has won a world champion and there's nobody to, uh, for there's no opponent for him. You know, Steve Austin is one of those one of those great stories. This man won the title, and he had no opponents. Where Vince got involved, and Vince McMahon became the promoter, became the number one opponent for him. He had nobody lined up. I I mean, you know, Bret Hart was gone. Shawn Michaels was gone. Uh, Hunter wasn't ready yet. The Rock wasn't ready yet. Who was there on that top tier to face? You had you had Undertaker. You had Kane. You had Vince. Foley at one point. But it took them a while. Like, they didn't really have a plan. It was going to be Steve Williams. I mean, that would have been the big one. But it's interesting to look at it that way. They, they know what they're doing with this now. 
Bloodline is shown backstage trying to get into their what they think is their locker room, but it's Cody's locker room. And Heyman tells Solo that if they want the locker room back, they have to get the title back. I like that. No one contender triple threat match. LA Knight defeated Santos Escobar and Bobby Lashley. He's the first winner of this. So here's where the interesting thing happens. You know, we could we could all f- do fantasy booking till the end of times. This was done exactly how it should have been done, in my opinion. Paul Heyman is recapping the story coming out of WrestleMania, saying that Roman had a choice and he chose to take out Seth Rollins, essentially putting the blame on, on Roman for that. Solo grabbed the mic and said that winning and losing matters and that, that there are consequences. He hugged Jimmy and told him he loved him, but he kind of did it before, before he hugged him. He did it in a way that he alluded like there's a problem here. And the and, way the camera panned, the yeah. was panned in on him, you couldn't see who was coming from behind. <laughs> yeah, so. well, coming from behind. Tama Tonga has attacked Jimmy Uso from behind to the dismay of Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman was mortified by this. The uh, facial expressions were awesome. Yeah. This, was, this made the whole segment, in my opinion. Solo went up to him and grabbed him, made him put the one sign up, and stomped on his phone. So there was a there was a callback moment later on where Tonga told Heyman because Heyman was checking on uh, on Uso on Jimmy Uso he says to him he goes this is orders this is what from the tribal chief essentially insinuating so, the tribal chief is now solo and not Roman <laughs> so, or or was he or or it could be the Rock who knows or it, they, or they it could be the Rock ended. or it could still yeah. be I mean. Listen, at the end of the day, this is going to lead to a Civil War story, which I'm so into, yes. where you're going to have The Rock, and you're going to have Tamatanga, and you'll have Solo, and then you'll have Roman and the Usos on the other side. I guess this means we're in extra innings. This is, this is becoming, this is the WWE universe. Are we going to have multiverses now in WWE? Yeah. Mm, we might. That's what we're going yeah, this to. Is definitely, this is definitely Marvel-esque, and it and I, I'm here for it. I think, yeah. I don't. I know some people don't like them prolonging this, but like I just said, I think. Why would they not? Ready. But here's the thing: Why <laughs> would they not? Because it's still successful. You don't prolong something yep. when it's dead. This is another chapter to that story, to that mini, that 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 Roman Reigns mini verse that they have now. This is another chapter to this, which I love, and it sets you up for a lot of interesting things. You know, if The Rock isn't going to be doing a singles match anytime soon. You could do a tag like this to continue that story with Roman, maybe. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could do here. Very interested in this. Tama Tonga looked like a million bucks, first of all. This is a guy that chose not to go there in 2016. Might have been the best decision that he ever made. They have had interest in Tama Tonga for years, for years. And you know, his brother was Camacho. Curious if we see him return sometime when his contract ends with New Japan. I think his contract is like, it's not up soon. I don't, I don't believe so. But this is fascinating to me. You know, this guy comes in. He stayed in New Japan for way longer than, than some would say he should have. But he had a great run. I mean, he's fantastic. He's improved astronomically. I had to sneeze there. Sorry. Also, also the... <laughs> Also, the uh, uh, fact that they're not shying away from talking about him and he, he worked in Japan. And this is who Yeah, he is. and he kept his name. Can you imagine yeah, what this man's, this poor man's name would have been? Oh, if this would have been Vince? Oh. oh. Jerry Samoe. Who the hell knows? <laughs> He's not even Samoan. He's Tongan. Yeah. Tong Tonga. <laughs> they, would, they would just modify it somewhere. They would give him some wacky thing. I, listen, I think Tomatonga is fantastic. I, I, there is a connection, obviously, with that family. Uh, you know, they, they, they would be considered cousins of sorts, right? Yeah, on screen, you, you can, they can be family. I think that's where people are getting. Yeah, well, I mean, not but, really cousins. But the Rock has it said that matter. that they're family. He has <laughs> yeah. said that Haku right. is family. Yeah. I mean, all, all of them. You know that they're. They've worked together their whole lives, you know, essentially. So, and they've been paired together in so many gimmicks. So, it's this is just it's very cool, very cool. 
Uh, Braun Breaker defeated Cameron Grimes. Braun Breaker looks great. This guy is ridiculous. He's so fast. I don't hate his theme. <laughs> Which is a plus because the WWE themes are terrible. If there's one change I would recommend they do is is hire a new group to make music for them. I this think th they're on. They they've slowly or surely have been doing it, but yeah, it's terrible. You know. it's really I mean like the most generic stock music they're giving these people. Bailey comes out to speak about her victory. She thanks the fans before Bailey's interrupted by Tiffany Strat uh, Stratton. Uh, she said that she should be getting a chance. She talks some trash about Naomi. Then Naomi comes out. She Naomi defeats Tiffany Stratton. Naomi is the uh, challenger for Bailey's title. Next week they're doing Next that week. match. Yeah. So it's not the big one, but yeah, it, it, it'll be good. Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair defeated Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. This was more of a display for both Bianca and Jay. They're building them as a tag team. A commentator they keep saying that they may be the most dominant tag team in WWE. You know, very cool. I like the story. Let them get the titles. Let them have a nice little run. Let Jay get comfortable. And then you do a turn. Yes. The most simple yep. of booking. And the main event here, mm -hmm. which I liked a lot. Number one contendership. AJ Styles defeated Rey Mysterio and Kevin Owens. So we're getting AJ and LA Knight again. Who should win this match? Who should be the number one contender in France? Should it be LA Knight? Is, is, is it his time? Or should it be as much as as much as I would say it should be L.A. Knight? If I go heel face, it's gonna yeah. be AJ. I, I yeah, I don't know. You know what? Have we seen that? No, no, we that's, haven't. That's great. We can. That's great. Yeah, one of those one of those matches that we we when Cody came in said, "Oh, we have all these matches. That's one we can check off." Yeah, AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Very good. You know, it's uh, I I'm excited for that. They they have a lot going on over there. I don't know. I I thought it was a good. I thought it was a good show. Um, I'm curious more than anything else on how they continue this because is this AJ is this going to be one, a one off, or is this going to continue? Also, Damian Priest, new world champion. This is a big deal, and they need to set up his opponents also. That should probably start Monday, right? And that should probably and the start Monday. Coming up. And the draft is coming up, so yeah. it's going to shake every everything up. So I can't even guess who who and where. But I hope Damien has a good run because obviously all the focus is on Cody right now. But you could do something very interesting with Damien. He does have the presence of a world champion. Obviously, Drew McIntyre is going to challenge for that in Scotland. CM Punk is involved in this. Seth Rollins is obviously going to come back and want to be involved in something because he's taking some time off. Very interesting on both sides. They've set up, they've done some really cool things. God, I hope they keep it up. Good wrestling is good wrestling. That's what matters. Go to a break here. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. A couple things to hit on before we go into collision and everything happening in AEW here. Big E shared an update on his neck. Two years ago, you know, he broke his neck uh, terribly. He's still not cleared to return. He said that he feels fine. He's, you know, he's able to function. And he's, you know, uh, like, like normal. However, his C1 is still not producing new bone. So that's not good. And it may be over for him in the ring, but I, you know, that guy has such a great future in anything he does. He's so charismatic and charming, and I, I, I hope to see him wrestle if he can. But if not, I hope he stays and does something. So they, much he's charisma. He's an asset to them. Yeah, it's tremendous. He's an asset. You know what I want him to do? You know what yeah. I think he should do? He should replace Dan Booker T on NXT commentary. I would love him on commentary. Well, Booker somewhere. doesn't know. Yeah, I, you put him on commentary anywhere. But uh, Book, I, listen, I'm not going to say anything bad about Booker. That's yeah. Let's I, not. I, I know. But <laughs> that's not getting me. into a. I don't want to get into. I, yeah, I, you know what? Let Booker yell at you. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> okay. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Kenny Omega also Fair. on his on his Twitch stream uh, spoke about brawl out. You know, he he said he he respects Punk. They have reached out. I could tell you that when all of this was happening, Punk and Kenny had spoken. 
like went before before collision started and Kenny came back. Uh, everybody came back essentially when Punk came back. I know that Kenny and Punk had spoken a few times. So it seems like their beef really wasn't, it wasn't between the two of them more than anything else. He entered the, he said he entered the situation try, intending on de-escalating. His main objective was to get Larry out of that room. You know, he, the way he sounded and he spoke, it really was, he's over this and he wants to kind of forget about that it ever happened. I agree with him. The Bucks aired the footage. Tony aired the footage with the Bucks on Dynamite. It was what it was. Who looked good? Who looked bad? I don't know. Depends on what side of the camp you're on. I mean, it was pretty cut and dry. It was exactly how how it was always described. There was no big revelation here. Nobody looked worse or better. It was the same. But it did draw a rating. It got them a little bit of a of a pop in the rating here. So I guess they got their their wish before you know before a big pay-per-view i don't know i was it the right thing to do was it the wrong thing to do i don't know we'll find out john moxley on friday love a friday pay-per-view by the way don't you i do i do it was this was fun i was watching this i was in and out on this Six thousand people in that building at wintrust in chicago a lot the big story here was jack perry being there he showed up uh, with a Crimea <laughs> River jacket on the Chicago on the Chicago flag, okay. No, it was yeah. He was holding the Chicago. He was flag holding the Chicago flag, out. yeah. And he came oh. out with a Crimea River jacket. Uh, he, I mean, obviously, he, he's getting ready to come back to AEW. But you know, Brian brought up an interesting fact with Dave, and he said, "Do you want your crowd chanting CM Punk every time Jack Perry's out there?" That was a problem for me. That was that was a problem, and it was also a problem in the Young Buck segment on, um, on Dynamite when they came out, and he was. I goes, what, what's the point of that? That's not helping, in my yeah. opinion, at least. Yeah. Um, you know, this was this was a really fun show, uh, from beginning to end. I'm not I, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I like the Mustafa Ali uh, and uh, Hiromu match. It was a lot of comedy in the beginning, but those two really turned it up. Uh, I thought that was great. The TV title match, I liked a lot. Jack, Zach, Jack Saber Jr. Who is Jack Saber Jr.? We need a Jack Saber. <laughs> Zach Saber Jr. defeated Matt Riddle. I was surprised by this. Nick Nemeth defeated. I was. Uh, you weren't. Why? The heat that Matt Riddle's getting. The heat that Matt Riddle's been getting. I think is bad heat. And I think maybe getting the title off him and letting him go away for a minute and reinventing himself a little bit probably probably is good for but him. He was away for a little but bit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but but yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's maybe he's not going back over to Japan for a while and this was yeah, or maybe they wanted to take the title yeah. off of him before Forbidden Door. Do you think you know? he'll be on Forbidden Door? I don't think now. Mm, fair. Yep. Mm, okay. Nick Makes Nemeth sense. defeated Ishii. I wonder if Nick Nemeth's going to be on that show. That'd be interesting. IWGP World Heavyweight mm -hmm. Championship. John Moxie defeated Naito. This, uh, very curious by this. I think this is a right call. Um, to me, to me, okay, the way I would do this is I think Suji should get that title. You've been, you've been on that train for a I, while. <laughs> I have been because I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I'm not, I'm not, listen, I'm not this, this, this prophetic pro wrestling mind where I could see talent, but I saw him and I saw it. He has something. I very much like his style. He's a big dude, good size on him, has an interesting look. Have, you know, he can't take the title off of Naito. They're, they're part of the same team. Have him take it off so of Moxley. So he goes after Moxley? He goes after yeah. Moxley. I would love that. I would love that. Him and Suji for, thing, yeah, at yeah. Forbidden Door would love it, unless they're doing, you know, John Moxie versus someone from AEW because he's the IWGP champion. I hope they don't do that. But yeah, you're right. I hope I, we can see that match anytime. I do want someone yeah. from New Japan. It, that actually makes sense. Um, yeah. One thing I will say, um, in the, the, one of the uh, standouts of the weekend, Azumi, who uh, lost to uh, Stephanie Vakur in yeah. a great match. And then that was a great collision. match. 
and had a banger with Tony Storm. And so, yeah, there's someone. She's 21. She's like 20. She's she's really young. She's going to be awesome. What did you think of what did you think of uh, Collision? Uh, I Collision was I was I was watching UFC, too. So I was okay. I was kind of stretched. By the way, every um, every fight could have been a main event on that show. Yes. Yes. Love that. Uh, mm. Love that. Love that show. The main event was unbelievable. But, you know, they, they started the show by announcing that John Moxley. This is Collision by announcing that John Moxley is a new IWGP champion. You got House of Black defeating Action Andretti, Dante Martin, and Matt Seidel. You got Shibata defeating Lee Moriarty. Shane Taylor then attacked Shibata after the match, bringing out his opponent for a battle of the belts tonight, Hook. Hook dropped Moriarty with a suplex before Taylor left the ring. I did not, you know, it's funny. I, I had to go back. I, I kind of like fell asleep for a little bit during the, uh, during this show. Not that it was a bad show. I was just tired yesterday. So I went back to watch it when I like kind of woke up. My DVR did not record Battle of the Belts, even though I set it to record. So Good, I did not I see Battle of the Belts. <laughs> huh? What? I don't have the notes for it. So yeah, good. so there you go. So I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, Dale Garcia defeated Angelico. Pa Pac Okada set up for Dynasty. This Dynasty card. Do you have that? Pull that up for me. Add that to my notes before uh, we go into the next segment here. Because I want to talk about that. It, it looks unbelievable. AW Women's World Title Eliminator. Tony Storm and Azumi. Thought that was great. Great match. And the main event really was also fantastic. Blackpool Combat Club defeated Don Cal's family. Kyle Fletcher, Powerhouse Hobbs. This was Danielson and Claudio. I love this match. This was such a good match. It, this, there's a reason why Danielson's the best. This is it. And it's setting you up for Dynasty. This show, uh, this is, I'm going to give you guys a little insight. This was not the original location for this show. Did you know that, MG? I did know that. Because <laughs> we've discussed it, but yes. Mm. All right, let me get the matches here. Here we go. Do you have it or no? Yeah, I got them. I'm putting them in right All now. All right, put them in for me so I could talk about it. Yeah, this was not the original location. Also, talking about original locations, Arthur Ashe was set to get Forbidden Door. It has now been moved to UBS. I announced that on Tuesday that the event was moved. Uh, I didn't have the story of why, okay? I just had the story that they were going to move it. And I was told UBS. I didn't announce UBS. I, I was planning on saying it this week, but they AEW announced their entire pay-per-view schedule for the rest of the year, whatever we have currently. Thank you. Thank you very much. I see my notes now. Okay, let's do this. We got Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe versus House of Black. Okay, this is the this is probably the lowest match on this, which says a lot, because you got Danielson and Will Ospreay. You got Okada against Pac. AEW International title, Roderick Strong versus Kyle O'Reilly. You got the latter. You got a. Oh yeah, they also announced that the match between the Bucks and FTR for the title is a ladder match now. We got that from, I guess, uh, the, the, the brawl, the, the all-in brawl footage. It's led to this. TBS champion. Yeah, they added it. They announced it last night. That yeah. They, they were doing it right. T TBS champion Julia Hart defends against Willow Nightingale. This is telling the story of Mercedes and where this goes. Tony Storm defends against Thunder Rosa. And the main event, AW World Championship on the line. Samoa Joe, the champion, defends against Swerve Strickland. Is it time for Swerve to get the title? Do you put the title on Swerve at this show? Because the next show is what? Double or nothing, right? If you I, plan on having uh if you had planning on having Joe be a long term champion. He needs to go on a run, but you, you got swerved so hot, white hot right now. I feel like it has to be now. I I would say, yeah, put the title on him. You know, next week we're not going to be able to talk about this because we're going to be leading up to it. You know, we're not going to have the results, but 
I mean, if I'm going to guess now, and you know what? Well, maybe maybe my opinion will change by 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 Wednesday or on Wednesday, but Swerve should win. Tony should win. Willow should win. I think the Bucks should beat FTR. Mm-hmm. I got a question for you. Hold on. Roderick should From- win. Okada should win. Osprey should win, and obviously uh, Copeland, uh, Eddie, and Briscoe should win. That that's my list. Mm-hmm. All right, what's your so question? my question is so so I don't know if you know that you've seen it this week on Dynamite. What are they doing with Mercedes? That segment where yeah. she was do, in great. an interview. Uh, Alex Marquez is not a good interviewer. I don't know what they do with him. I like Alex Marquez. I like his interview style. It's very non-over-the-top. It's very just asking a question. I've always felt like he's good. But he was asked to act in that sense, and I don't think it worked. And that that whole thing where she's the lights go out and they come back on and she's just laying there moaning, I was like, that didn't work for me. I don't know. No, it didn't didn't work. You You know what it was? She she still and I'm not knocking her. She needs to get out of that WWE stuff. Yes, and it's, it's not good time. WWE. It's not yeah. good WWE. It's like 2015 WWE, and I think she's gonna learn like everybody else does. You leave that place and you're in a whole different universe now. So the, your delivery needs to change. Your promos need to change. I listen. She's she's good. She's gonna change. It's gonna happen. But I'm curious where it goes. Also, Max Holloway. Congratulations to Max Holloway before we leave this segment here. What a what a fantastic knockout punch in the fifth round. One Loved second it. left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. It was fantastic. I mean, it was it was a great card. I, I had a great time watching UFC. I know we never talk about it on this. Guys, we're going to a quick break. When we come back, a few more things we're going to talk about. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Tomorrow, Monday Night Raw. What do they have planned? Do you know what they have planned for Raw tomorrow? Uh, I I know they're have Whatever they're doing with uh, Damian Priest's next contender, I think they're doing that. I don't know for sure. I didn't pull it up. Yeah, well, we have... Uh, I, they're in Montreal, remember? So that's going to be a big crowd. Oh, they're doing... Yeah, they're doing they're Montreal. Doing, uh, they're doing Sammy, Sammy yep. versus um, uh, Chad Gable. Yeah, and that's gonna be and that's gonna be a big match. And obviously, you know, Sammy needs to win this, but make that the freaking main event. Put that in the main event oh, yeah. spot. That crowd is By gonna far. eat this yep. up. I mean, you're gonna have you know, Sammy's from Montreal. This is a big deal. I got it real quick, if you want. Yeah, uh, yeah. Give also, it to me. Um, you have uh, Finn Balor versus uh, Jey Uso. Um, okay. That's, I'm curious if Jimmy so plays good. a part in this, you know, because now I'm sure that Jimmy is going to show up and be like, what the hell? What happened? OK, so that match and then Rhea Ripley is uh, is addressing Liv Morgan's attack, that brutal chair shot she took. Um, Cody Rhodes appears. Sammy uh, defends against Chad Gable. Andrade must Dominic yeah. Mysterio. Cool. And a uh, couple other things. Look, look at that. We have a full lineup here. Isn't that unbelievable? Listen, and also, I, I think this week is going to be another fun week of wrestling. We got the pay-per-view next Sunday, AEW Dynasty, which it looks like a packed card. It'll uh, Things are going to happen from this. We're going to have more answers, which I'm, which I'm glad. A lot of stuff. Guys, this was a blast. I always have a great time with you guys. Next week, I, I have 18,000 shows I'm going to be doing. You can follow me on Twitter. You can get all the information there. And until next time, guys, we'll see you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.